Another thing you can do with MLOps is image to image. Again, we're going to drop down a GeoNode, dive in there, and we'll build our standard setup so far that we know from the last tutorial. So let me just fast forward through that. Prompt create, tokenizer, text encoder, scheduler. Scheduler needs a latent noise, it goes in here, solver, and an image decoder. Let's reframe this and maybe adjust our prompts. So let's create another prompt create and another tokenizer. These are the negative prompts. the second slot. And now to create an image to image workflow, what we need is to load in another image, which we're going to do with the MLOps image to points, which you can point to an image here or to a URL. In my case, I will just point it to a portrait of myself. It's this. And now let's encode this into latents using the SD image encoder. It goes in here. And now that this image is encoded into latent space, it can go into our scheduler's third input slot like this. Let's adjust our prompt and turn me into, let's say, an astronaut. Let's see what the solver and image decoder spit out. And yeah, I mean, it's a mangled astronaut. Let's just go over the settings here. So in our scheduler, similarly to the text to image workflow, we have these parameters here. And one of the more important ones in an image to image workflow is the image guidance strength. The closer this is to one, the more freedom stable diffusion has. So if I set this to one, stable diffusion is allowed to absolutely deviate from the input image. While when I set this to a lower value, stable diffusion really tries to stick to the original image. So I've had good experiences with values between 0.6 and 0.9. Well, creepy, tiny bit better, mm, somewhat getting there. So you get the idea. It's kind of fiddly to find out the right strength. Maybe we'll have to adjust our seed in our like noise generate. But what we definitely could do is animate this image guidance strength in order to find a value that results in an image that we can accept. So just zooming out, that's your basic image to image workflow. Another thing you can do is add a mask to do in painting. So let's have a look at the image I feed in there. I also provided another mask image. Let's just copy and paste those two nodes here. And in here, let's point it to the mask, which is this just has my lower face masked out. And to use this as a mask, we actually do not need this image encoder here. We can feed that straight into the fourth slot in our scheduler, which says mask. And maybe let's prompt not for an astronaut, but let's prompt for a man with a majestic beard. And let's see what it spits out. So you could argue that this is a majestic beard, but definitely what happened there is the mask worked. Let's just attach an image export. Maybe look at this from the right side here. Make sure that our color space is set up correctly. Maybe switch the background to be dark. And that's how you use a mask for in painting with stable diffusion. For example, not only to mess around with pictures of yourself, but also to fix textures or modify parts of textures or generally fiddle around with 2D image data. Again, this is the whole node tree. So again, quite compact. And I hope you're having fun with those tools. So don't be shy sharing your results and see you next time.